Hi and welcome to this next part of our classroom learning where I'm going to show you how to create a piece of classwork for students to do. So let's head over to the classwork page and as I mentioned previously there is a button here where you can create different types of work for students to do. So assignments, quizzes, questions, materials and to reuse things. To quickly recap, an assignment is probably what you'll use most of the time. It's when you ask students to do something, they do it, they hand it in, you give some feedback, they grade, you grade it, and, and so on. It's a typical classroom assignment process. A quiz assignment is when you want to create a quiz using Google Forms, and you'd use that one when you want to create a quiz from scratch, and it will create a brand new empty form for you that you can put some questions into, and it'll turn all the appropriate settings on. However, if you've already got a Google Form or a quiz set up that you want to, want to use, don't use the quiz assignment one. Put it in as an actual assignment if you've already got the quiz made. Okay, Quiz assignment is only when you're starting from scratch. You can add a question, which is a simple like uh, one question. It can either be multiple choice or short answer, but a single question uh, is what that does. And material is when you want to just give your students something. So maybe a worksheet or a video or just something to read or look at. You can hand it out as material. No further action needed. There will be no grading process or anything taking place. And finally, you can reuse a post. If you've already made something and used it previously or in another class, you can bring it in and reuse it for a second time. And we've looked at creating topics, which are these topic headings, in the previous uh, section of this video. Let's look at how we create an actual assignment. So I will click on the assignment button here and let's just call this um, uh, numbers task, right? And I want to give my students something. I might say, uh, look at the uh, worksheet, blah, blah, blah. And I or write whatever I want my students to do there. You can be as descriptive as you like in there. Now, Here's a couple of things I want you to think about. Using these buttons along the bottom here, you can add a lot of things to a classroom assignment. You can give your students things for them to interact with. A lot of the teachers, let me just flip over here for example, a lot of us who have been teaching for a while, we have many worksheets. And while worksheets are fine in a physical classroom and getting kids to fill them out with pen and paper, they don't work so well in a digital environment because as you can imagine, if I just simply attach this PDF to this classroom task, and I can do that, let's actually do that right now. I go over here and I say I want to upload and I'm not sure where I put that, uh, that thing. I think I put it in, it's probably here in recent. Uh, no, it'll be in here. Sorry, let me just find this for you for a second. Uh, it is uh, this one here, okay. So I'm just uploading that worksheet into there and you can see it is now attached. It's a PDF. It's this PDF is in fact this one here. Okay, so I can attach that PDF and that's fine and the students will get it, but they can't really do much with it because, well, it's a PDF. They would have to either have some sort of a digital way of drawing on it or to print it out and do it and then they've got to figure out how to get it back in. It's PDFs and worksheets, generally speaking, they're not really well suited for this type of digital working. What you could do, however, is here I've gone to Google Forms and I've started to recreate this worksheet. So you can see how many days in 31 weeks, uh, this question here, and I've simply turned it into a Google Form where I'm asking the same questions. Now, admittedly, some of these questions here get into different formats of questions, which can be a little bit tricky to replicate in a Google Form, but you might just rephrase the question or look at it a slightly different way that still tests the same skills from a student. But if you can take those non-digital forms like PDFs and turn them into digital friendly resources, then they're much easier to use inside Classroom. Let me go back to Classroom and I'll show you what I mean. Uh, so I've attached the PDF here, which is probably not that useful for a student. But if I wanted to go back and say, let's go to Google Drive, and I should be able to go to my recent collection here and here is the maths worksheet that I've started to create from that PDF um, which you know uses, uses similar, similar sort of questions. I can click on add and I'm going to add that in there and that then goes in as a Google form. Um, I, I guess what I'm trying to point out to you is that we do, we've done a lot of things in teaching for a long time and we've used certain processes and as we move into a digital world and using tools like Google Classroom, sometimes we have to rethink some of the things we've done 
in the non-digital world so that they work well in the digital world. And it's not an impossible task. It's actually pretty straightforward. You can take a lot of the existing resources you've got, digitize them in a way. There is a little bit of work in changing them over. But once that's done, they become much more reusable over time. And so you end up saving time in the long run. Um, so I would not attach a PDF to this. So I'm just going to get rid of that by turning that off. Uh, and I would instead just attach, say, this form. Uh, by the way, if you're using Chromebooks, if your students are using Chromebooks, you have the ability to turn this on, this locked mode. Uh, and when you do that, when a student goes to open this Google Form, it will actually open full screen. It'll cut out any other browser windows so they won't be able to go looking for answers. Uh, they'll be locked into that quiz while they're doing it. And as soon as they submit it, it will unlock it and hand the, the machine back to them. Um, I'll just turn that off for now. But if you've got Chromebooks in your class, that's a great option. Um, similar to the way NAPLAN works, where it just goes full screen and you're kind of locked into that application until you're done. Uh, because this is a form, you've also got an option here for grade importing. So it will automatically grade itself because I've set it up as a self-marking form. Um, how we do that might be a lesson for another time. Uh, but if you turn on the grade importing, that will automatically bring the grades in to the grade book. So you won't have to handle anything. It's all automatic. Uh, and so that is how you set that up. Now, uh, a couple of things over on this side to think about as you're submitting tasks out to students, you can submit to multiple classes at once. So let's just say you did a composite year seven, eight class, you might want to send this to both classes together. Uh, that's a possibility. And then both classes will get the same work. Uh, you may decide, oh, actually, you may decide if you're handing to more than one class and you'd like to schedule this work to go out. So. Uh, maybe those two classes are taking places at different times during the week. You have the option up here in this drop down next to the assign button to schedule that. And when you schedule a class, or when you schedule a task to multiple classes, you have the option of choosing to go out at different times. So maybe the Monday class gets dropped on a Monday and then Wednesday gets dropped on Wednesday. Uh, so each student is getting, each class is getting it when they need it and not earlier. Uh, I will not do that for now, but just be aware that exists. I'm going to turn that off. And the other thing you can do, and this is not a good example because I don't have any students in this class yet, but if I did, I would have a list of students here and I can choose to give a task to a specific student or students. So it's a great way to differentiate the work. Um, you can assign the number of points that a task is worth. It defaults to 100, but maybe this is only worth 20 points, in which case just put 20. Or maybe you're giving a task that's not marked at all. It's just a practice task and you don't intend to actually grade it and include it in the gradebook. You can mark it as an unmarked task. You can indicate that it's an unmarked task. Uh, if it's got a due date, you can put that in there. Uh, and that's really neat if you put a due date in because it will pop up on the student's calendar to remind them that the task is due. So that's a great way for students to be organized. And finally, you can add it to a particular topic. So this is a numbers task. I'm going to put it in the numbers category over here. Uh, we're going to come back and look at rubrics and this other thing in just a sec. This uh, plagiarism check. Um, but that, other than that, that is how you would set up a task. You'd give it a name, give it a description, attach whatever attachments. You can have as many attachments as you like to it. Do think about how those attachments make sense in a digital world. That will change the way you think about using Classroom. We sometimes think about Google Classroom as being this tool that was used for the pandemic when students weren't in our classes. But Classroom was invented about four years prior to any pandemics coming along. And so, uh, you know, it was never designed to be a pandemic solution, although it was a great one. Um, it was designed for in-class use. Uh, and so that ability for giving students work that makes sense in a digital world, keeps them organized. Um, think about the way you use Classroom in the regular way you teach, not just the emergency way you, way you teach. Uh, you can attach anything at all, either linking out to a, a website or a video or something you've got online. You can upload whatever types of files you like. We're going to talk about practice sets in a bit. Uh, you can create your own document here. If you want to add a new blank document or, or just create something on the fly, you can do that. Link out to YouTube, link out to a drive file. There is almost anything you can attach to a classroom task to give to your students, you can do right here. And then, of course, you need to think about the the mechanics of how this is being handed out. Does it have a due date? How many points is it worth? What category does it belong to? And so on. So this is where you set all this stuff up here. And once you're ready, you click the assign button and that assignment then goes out to all the students. And you might recall because I showed I wanted the, uh, the short announcements on the classwork stream page. When I go to stream, you'll see it says here that this new task, numbers task was assigned to students. 
uh, gets updated there in the classroom stream. So there you go, that's some things to think about as you're starting to push work out to students. But particularly, I want you to think about how do you take things that make sense for students to do in a digital world, making them digital tasks that they can interact with directly on the computer. Uh, and if you can nail that one, that will change the way you use Classroom completely. See you in the next video.